I started my first job down around 1967, and that was at GE Reentry Systems outside of Philadelphia. I was uh, both a uh, instrumentation engineer for uh, reentry systems, and then I ended up in the test equipment division because it was more fun. In the test equipment division, we were exposed to lots of different pieces of a satellite, how to build racks of test equipment to uh, test them. And from there, I ended up at a place called Philbrick Nexus up in Boston where I met Bob Pease. We worked for a year together at Philbrick before I moved out to National Semiconductor uh, working for Bob Weidler. And I stayed at National for 10 years until I started Linear. Back when I was going to school, I learned about analog design a little bit in school. I learned how transistors worked, and I learned the basic laws. But the jobs that I had exposed me to many different types of analog circuits. Back in those days, there were very few ICs, and they weren't used in test equipment or instruments. You could get to see the circuitry in the different instruments, and it it was a teaching tool for me in that I saw many different types of analog circuits, analyzed how they worked, and remembered them. The other thing that I got uh, a lot of information out of was working with Bob Pease at Philbrick, who had many years of analog design experience before I got there. If you're going to be an analog engineer, you need to understand circuits intuitively. You have to be able to look at them and understand them very quickly. Just like reading a book, you don't need to look up all the words in the dictionary to understand what you're reading. You start reading and you understand it. If you're an analog engineer and you understand circuitry and all the bits and pieces of circuitry that analog engineers use, such as diff amps and, and inverters and references. If you understand all of those pieces and how they work, you can look at a complicated schematic and understand it in just a few minutes and understand how it works. That's where you need to be to be a good analog engineer. Today, the instrumentation that's out there and the equipment that's out there don't have schematics in them anymore. And the ICs rarely publish the circuitry inside. So how do you get to learn how circuitry works and how you hook it up? About the best place to do it is application notes from companies. They show completed circuits wrapped around their ICs. And understanding how these circuits work is a good way of learning how to do your own circuits. We've done a large number of application notes and they've ended up in a book. And understanding these circuits will help you understand analog design. We write many application notes and technical do documents to explain our ICs. They also explain how they work and how the overall circuitry works. There's a couple of reasons we do it. One, these ICs are complicated and we want to teach customers how to be able to hook them up and use them. Also, the applications are valuable teaching aid to schools and to people wanting to understand some basic circuitry. So while the main use is in instructing people how to use the ICs, we put a lot of tutorial information in there just so that we can bring people up to speed and hopefully generate more analog engineers. I met Jim when I was at National Semiconductor, and we had been friends up to the time he died. Jim was a brilliant engineer, and I think that his writing and explanation of ICs and how to use them is the best in the world. Jim was a brilliant engineer and had a great sense of humor, and uh, I'll never forget all the tricks he's played on me over the years.
I think if you look around the web, you'll find some write-ups about tricks with clocks and with alarms and with a few other items that Jim has done. But the tricks are always technical. So you have to be technical to appreciate them. Being an analog engineer means you always have a job because we're in short supply um, and always have been. If you want to be a good analog engineer, study circuits so you can write your own. Um, and start from scratch and design a circuit. And once you've done that, you've mastered most of what it takes to be a, an analog engineer. You've got an understanding of how to put things together and make it work.